So here's a screenshot of the presentation mode of the version of this looper that Paul used for Schick Machine for its debut. And on the left, we have master controls and audio input controls for levels and metering and compression and EQ. And then the underlying engine is modular. This particular version has four channels. Um, I've run up to 16, but four was enough, and that keeps it nice and safe. On the left side of that, we've got the big buttons for the important things you have to hit on time and quickly for recording and overdub and input mode. There's controls for synchronization so that loops can be timed with each other or not. Uh, there's some stuff here, which is the tip of an iceberg of how this looper is, as far as I know, pretty unique in that the playback loop can be varied in speed uh, even while you're still recording into it without glitches. And then on the right, there's output level controls, just the simple essential ones for level and panning. Uh, but under the hood, there's another mixer screen that we added, I think, a couple days before the show because these on-screen knobs were a little too small. So these are just, this took about 10 minutes to make. Um, big fader copies of existing controls to make it a little easier for Paul to mix with a mouse, which is always a fun thing to try and do. Those controls are copies of these matrix mix buttons, which shows how, again, there's more and more features under the hood for cross-mixing between loops, for putting in effect sends within the feedback loop, and on and on and on.